I've been seeing something disturbing in my clinic recently. I've been seeing lots of children coming in who have type 2 diabetes from diet or even non-alcoholic fatty liver. And historically, this is something highly unusual, especially in a child. Usually this is after decades of insulin resistance where we're starting to see type 2 diabetes, that is, but now we're seeing it even in children. And non-alcoholic fatty liver is typically a much further downstream consequence of this sort of pattern. Now, in this video, I want to discuss what are some of the causes of this and what I think is the single worst thing you can consume that is probably leading to this. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Alex Hine, board licensed acupuncturist and doctor of traditional Chinese medicine and author of the health book, Master of the Day. So let's jump in here. So this is a sort of curious epidemic that I'm seeing in my clinic, in my practice. What's interesting is that these are people who are even having not only non-alcoholic fatty liver, but I've even seen people come in with liver cirrhosis, leading to liver failure from their diet. You know, historically, you only see this typically in alcoholics being the largest demographic, but you're seeing this from people who have never had alcohol. I've seen a few patients who've come in, they're not drinkers, never been big drinkers, not smokers, but eat a terrible diet and are literally coming in with not just type 2 diabetes, not just gallbladder removals, not just non-alcoholic fatty liver, but liver cirrhosis, leading to even liver transplants and it's purely from a dietary point of view now the first time i heard this i thought it was shocking because i was surprised these particular patients there was three in particular i was surprised they were not heavy drinkers but when i had heard about this and began researching it more it is something that is becoming more and more common and it got me thinking what is causing this and what is this epidemic here? Now, what I found was that typically these people had one thing in common. They had consumed high amounts of calories from liquid soft drinks. This is something we are gonna discuss here a little bit more. A lot of these patients that also came in, they were wondering what was the root cause of this fatty liver? How did I get fatty liver? How did I get my gallbladder removed? Why did it get so diseased? What was the problem there? Why did I have so much acid reflux? Why did I gain all this weight? And to answer those questions, I've recently created a free root cause quiz, which is a pretty comprehensive, it's like nine or 10 pages. It goes into the dominant symptoms I'm seeing, what patterns or organ function, dysfunction they're related to from a traditional Chinese medicine point of view. And you can go ahead and score yourself. And on top of that, we also hyperlinked to a lot of our top videos to self-treat regarding those symptoms. So the whole thing's free. It's the first link below the video. I'd highly recommend you checking it out because it's a pretty good resource to get in the general diagnostic ballpark here. Now, from a traditional Chinese medicine view, what organs are mostly being affected when we talk about non-alcoholic fatty liver? When we describe the common progression you see from low-grade GI problems to serious GI problems, let's just say fatty liver, what I commonly see is this progression. It starts off with what your acupuncturist might call spleen chi deficiency. This is an issue with the pancreas, the stomach, digestive enzymes, and often lower stomach acid levels. These are people who are often eating heavy or eating a standard American diet. It's too much for the body to process. They start off by getting bloating, indigestion, maybe a little bit of weight gain, and then they start getting acid reflux. So once that is enough, that's too much, they start to get acid reflux. And to me, the dead ringer that the gallbladder is now having a problem is that you're having regular acid reflux, bitterness or sourness in the mouth, and you're getting, I mean, the worst would be you're getting distension, pressure, pain, or gallbladder attacks, ultimately. Now, once you've had one or two gallbladder attacks, usually when you go to the ER, they're gonna recommend a you know cholecystectomy, take out the gallbladder. Typically, this is very preventable from a Chinese medicine point of view with formulas. We have dozens of case studies. Eventually, I'm gonna start publishing them here on video so you can see. This localized deficiency from typically poor diet leads to a localized stagnation in the gallbladder. When you're having gallbladder issues, from my point of view, it's liver issues are not far off, whether it's just fatty liver or it's something else. So you could conceptualize fatty liver almost like the development of just abdominal fat in general. It's the garbage from the digestive system that the body is shunting to be placed somewhere. You've thrown in way too much food and way too much of the wrong food, and it's almost like this fermenting nasty soup and the body's like, what do, what do I do with all this? What do I do? So blood sugar goes up, insulin resistance, diabetes, body fat accumulation, weight gain. Almost always there's a gallbladder or liver issue going on at the same time. But you could visualize fatty liver from a patho mechanism point of view as almost being like the garbage from the digestive system, what Chinese medicine calls the middle burner, that is now being dumped elsewhere to store. The liver is one of those areas that it gets stored and body fat is another area that it gets stored. Now, let's jump into a bit of the research on specifically sugary drinks and the link to non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. One study found that there's an increased risk of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease 
with sugary beverage consumption. They found that high consumption of sugar-sweetened beverages was associated with a higher prevalence of non-alcoholic fatty liver. And they found that individuals who consumed more than one drink a day had a significantly higher risk of this compared to people who didn't. Another one was linking fructose intake to liver fat. This study found that, this is in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, found that high fructose consumption prevalent in sodas and other sugary beverages contributes to increased liver fat and fibrosis. A third study was done on children and adolescents. This study, done in the Journal of Pediatrics, found that there's a strong association between high intake of sugary drinks and the presence of fatty liver disease, even in young people, which is highly abnormal. Another study linked sugary drinks to non-alcoholic fatty liver, they found that it increased insulin resistance as well as inflammation, which are key factors in the development or pathogenesis of non-alcoholic fatty liver. I'm gonna stop saying that, it's a big word. The final study was a longitudinal study, long period of time. They found that higher consumption of sugar-sweetened beverages was associated with an increased risk, just in general, and that reducing sugary drinks as an individual intervention was a very, very effective preventive measure. In traditional Chinese medicine, there are formulas that we use to treat it. You know the legalese, I've gotta be careful about saying treat, prevent, and cure. God forbid the FDA comes to find me, but you should know that, for example, there's a study done. It's called freeze-dried sunisan powder can ameliorate a high-fat diet induced non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. What they found was that they randomized groups of mice. One group of mice, they fed a high-fat unlimited diet. The other group, they fed the high-fat unlimited diet and gave them a formula we would traditionally use to treat this. Here's what they found. They found that compared to the overall fat group, the mice that were eating the high fat chow, the formula group had decreased body weight, decreased liver index, decreased visceral fat, as well as lower triglycerides, and also measures of certain liver enzymes that would be a problem if they were high. Consuming this formula while they ate a crappy diet, it actually prevented or minimized the development of fatty liver, which is kind of cool when you think about it. But these are the common formulas we use clinically. So one of them is called Sunisan. So just some thoughts about this little epidemic that I've been seeing lately. It's concerning, it's only gonna get worse. It is certainly a disease of affluence, right? In our modern processed food culture. But again, don't forget if you're curious where certain symptoms are coming from, Click this little card here because it has a free quiz I've put together. It's like 10 pages long, it's really good. On top of that, there's another great video on this exact topic from TCM point of view right up here.